Okay, so this video is going to walk you through the OPCD conversion setup and initial conversion of meshes. Um, you're going to get OPCD conversion tool zip, and if you unzip it on your hard drive, it's going to look similar to this. Now, it could look a little different, and some files may be different or updated uh, as time goes on. Uh, you're going to get a conversion blend file, which is basically an empty file with uh, two uh, Python files loaded in that. We'll go to that in a second. You're going to have something called boundary aligned remesh. Do not cha change the uh, misspelling of this here. That's how that is. This is downloaded free online, and in that is made by Jacques de Costa. If you want to look that up, uh, you're going to have a Unity files folder. That's going to have uh, two files in that. Uh, those will be placed in the editor folder in Unity, and I'll show you where that goes in a bit. And then you're going to have a uh, mostly empty terrain folder that has these two GS Pro SVG, or sorry, three uh, SVG convert files. Uh, you're going to need to leave those there. And then an empty FBX folder. Uh, so what you're going to typically do is have a completed terrain and a completed SVG file and then you're ready to go here. Um, in Unity, the first thing you're going to need to do is convert your comp completed terrain and save that into this folder. The way you're going to do that is go into Unity and uh, within Unity, this is just a mess of a project here, uh, but in Unity you're going to have an editor folder in, under the assets. If you do not, just right click on assets and then um, create folder and then name that editor and then within the editor folder put uh, both those you can just drag and drop so you could literally just open here and select both of these and then just left click and drag them into the editor folder once you've done that that's going to make two new tabs up here you're going to have a um, GSP tab that's going to have this uh, set mesh materials and then you're going to have this terrain tab, which is export to OBJ. We're going to worry about the set mesh materials later. Uh, right now, the terrain export to OBJ is what you're going to want to do. And remember, this is you finalized all your terrain sculpting and you're ready to convert meshes. Now, this process is easy enough that you can bounce back and forth after you've made edits. Um, but it is a little cumbersome to have to export the OBJ. But once you get used to the workflow, it's really not bad to make edits come back and fix some things, but it will take you a few times to get to that point. Uh, when you click export to OBJ, um, it's going to tell me no terrain found because I've hidden them. Uh, you should have your single terrain and it's labeled terrain. And if I make it unhidden, I bet I can run this now. Okay, and so it's found that terrain there. Um, you may have to do, it just depends if you have multiple terrains, how you get it, you would just hide the, all the terrains except the one that you want uh, to export. Um, and so when you do this, you want your export to be triangles. You want your resolution to be quarter. Uh, do not accidentally do this at full. It will take a really, really long time. Half, I think, usually takes about 20 minutes or so, but quarter is what you're going to want to do and click export. It'll give you a, a box here uh, where to save that, and you can just navigate to your folder. Now, one just kind of clean word of advice, um, you're going to get the OPCD conversion tools. You unzip it on your hard drive, and or um, let's see, when you unzip it, uh, in the end, you're going to have the set of tools. What you'll probably want to do is, I'm going to just do this for the tutorial here. Is let's just right click here and we're going to name this just tutorial but this would be your course you know every time you do a course you're going to want to make sort of a conversion folder for it and then just take these tools uh, i'm going to pause here well you can see here i'm within this sort of safe navigation so i can't do it but uh in the end you're going to uh, take the opcd conversion tools just copy go inside that left click and drag here right click and copy those and then uh, come back into your tutorial here and then right click and paste those in so I'm gonna go ahead and pause and clean that up so just showing you here this is what you would do is left click and drag copy I'm gonna come back to my tutorial folder or my course name folder and then I'm gonna paste those in here okay so this is where I'm gonna export my terrain OBJ I'll just go ahead and do that here 
Let's put that into my tutorial folder. And then you're going to want to name it terrain.obj. I think that's the default. And this doesn't take too long. After this exports, um, I'm going to go ahead and copy my SVG into that terrain folder as well. And then we'll show you how we, we manage the SVG here. So within that terrain folder, I've got my three convert files, my terrain OBJ, and my master SVG. You can leave this here and keep editing this. There's no harm in that. Um, what we're going to do is once this SVG is complete, and just a couple things, you know, make sure you follow the other videos and the naming convention of the layers. We're just going to drag and drop this over top of the exe file. So left click and drag over the exe file. It's going to look like it did nothing or not much there. And it's going to create this converted file. We can leave both these here and we're going to head into Blender. So I'm going to come here and double click on this conversion blend file. And that should open uh, Blender for us. If you don't have it directly to 2.83 LTS, then go ahead and open Blender first. In that, you know, I've got multiple blenders here, and I'm going to go ahead and open um, that conversion blend file. Okay, so as you notice, there's not much here. An empty scene collection is what you want. Uh, yours is going to look different because there are some user preferences sides on Blender that I can't save for you. Um, you're going to notice you have no tools here yet or OPCD conversion tools. Uh, the way you're going to get those to load is put a uh, click up top here on the word scripting and so that your layout looks like mine if it's not already. Um, you're going to pick the debug tool here and click this play button and then you're going to click this down here arrow here and pick the OPCD conversion tool and hit the play button as well. You'll see that brings these up here in this tab in the, this is uh, sort of known as the 3D view panel. It's going to bring up these tabs here. If you hit N, that cycles the tab, uh, you know, to come back. The other option you have is there is this little tiny arrow up here. You click it and it shows up, but N is the quick function. But if your mouse is over here on the right and you hit N, it's not going to do anything there. So, um, I just typed in there and that would not be a good thing. So if your arrow's over here, you can see. Now, you don't need this debug anymore, or sorry, you don't need this scripting panel anymore, so now you can go back to your layout, okay? Now, if you haven't followed me along with Blender in the past, you may not have this boundary align remesh loaded. So you need to load uh, an add-on tool. Once again, I can't do that for you. You have to do this for yourself. So you're going to go edit preferences, install, and then within those files I gave you is this boundary align remesh and you're going to click on that and then do install add-on. I already have that uh, so I don't have to do that. But when you do that, um, it's going to show up like this. It may not have a checkbox to it. Just make sure you click the checkbox so that's on. That's all you need to do and then you close out here. I know it seems like, well, don't I need to load it or something? What do I need to do? Just make sure the checkbox for the boundary align remesh is ticked and then uh, close this out. And then that's going to be loaded to just check if you have it loaded. Let me see. Yeah, if you right click, don't pick it. But if you right click, you're going to see it's there. You don't need to do anything. That's included um, automatically in all these protocols uh, that I've got for your course conversion. Um, so that's that's the end of that for what you're going to need to do. So now go ahead and open the OPCD conversion tab. You're going to see something like this or something similar. I'm sure it's going to get much larger and more complicated as time allows. Import SVG is what you're going to want to click. And then I'm going to go into my uh, terrain folder and then I'm going to pick that converted SVG file. And so that's going to go ahead and load. And for the purposes of time, I'm going to delete. And this is how you can do kind of one hole at a time. You can either save your SVG as a single hole, or you can choose um, to delete things. If you're doing your entire course, then uh, just leave everything alone. Um, so you'll see here what I've done. This is like a hierarchy similar to Unity, but I'm doing Shift, left click to multi-select, right click, and then choose Delete. 
I'm going to go ahead and pause and have my menu here of keystrokes. We'll see how obnoxious this is here. This is something called Karnak. But it, it should allow you to see my keystrokes. Maybe we can make it a drinking game. I don't know. All right. So now I'm hole three here. Um, and I'm going to load up my terrain. Now everybody's terrain is going to load differently time-wise, probably two to four minutes. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and now it's only going to search for OBJs. Um, and I might even have limited to just terrain OBJ. So if you've misspelled it, um, then you may not be able to find it. Uh, but make sure it's just terrain.obj, and that should have came auto uh, from our previous routine. And then we're going to go ahead and import this. I'll pause while it loads. Okay, so after um, that loads, you should have something like this. That's the terrain. If you zoom way out, it's going to disappear. So another user preference side here. Click this view up here and change this end. So if you see here these tabs on the side view, Change this end to like 8,000, and then it's just going to be able to keep it in view for you. Um, all right, so now we're ready to go back to OPCD conversion tab here, and then we want to do, uh, let's first load up a window here. So go window, toggle system console. If you forget to do this, this isn't the end of the world, but this opens a second panel that will always be down here on, as like a little aside to, to the blender. The cool thing about this second panel, I have a second monitor that I drag this to, um, but the cool thing about this panel is it's going to show you what's happening so you can know that you're um, not stalled out, especially on the final conversion of things. It takes maybe 20 minutes, and you're going to want to see that it's still chugging through the meshes. So I'm going to, when you click on something else, this may go, uh, it's not like always, um, I don't think you can pick it to always be on top. I also um, can't set a state for it in my routines, in my um, conversion tools. It would be great if I could set a state for it to be up. Um, but if I put that in here, it cycles it in and out. And so unfortunately, you've got to do that manually. Sometimes you forget to do it. And it's a little frustrating because then you just don't know what's happening. So I'll show you this here real quick. Um, we're going to do convert mats and cut right now. And then I'm going to bring that panel back up here so we can watch it as it goes. See, it already went. And did everything. I only have one hole here, but it will work up to hole number 99. Um, and obviously, you don't have those, but just in case people are doing kind of wild things or multiple courses on a single SVG, we can do that. Okay, so now we're ready to inspect. Don't close this, just click on your blender here and it'll go to the back. Now we're ready to inspect. Middle mouse, you can see here. So hopefully, if you're, you don't have some of these or haven't played in Blender before, this is going to be useful to you guys somewhat. Uh, but you can see that I'm doing shift middle mouse there to move around, and then I'm using um, the middle mouse to just zoom in and out. Now, um, let's see here. What do I want to show you? Oh, if you have done this incorrectly, so say you've got an issue with your meshes, this will not look clean. Uh, the most common thing is there'll be like a bunch of uh, overlap here. It's kind of what we call Z fighting. It'll mean it didn't cut it out correctly. Uh, some issues uh, will be in the do's and don'ts. One common thing would be like this would be a donut. If I ran this, um, if I ran this rough around this here, and then this uh, was inside of that like as a donut, um, you can't have cutouts inside your shapes. Just let this program do all the cutting out. Um, ultimately there'll be some tips and tricks for how to do some fancy things but this one's a little more wild you can see this kind of bleeds out over the end of the rough but it handles it all correctly um, there's really minimal space here between uh, the rough and the semi rough and it handles it all wonderfully so you can do a lot that you couldn't do in previous programs um, this is going to allow you to create some really neat uh, shapes that you may want to do to customize your course so anyway the point is this all looks clean, so I know that I've drawn my SVG correctly. And now go ahead and just click Convert Meshes, and then you're going to see same thing here. This is going to now run through this. Now, typically the first spline per hole, which is the outermost spline, is going to take the longest. So you're going to see here it's just remeshing things for us, and it's done. And so come in here. So you can see this is now taken on the topology of the terrain. 
and that terrain that I actually had up is not the correct terrain, terrain for this, so it's gonna look goofy. But you should be able to see here, we're gonna zoom in here and see, look, oh, it's auto-done auto our um, you know, bunkers, and I'm sure some of those routines will change over time. And then we'll zoom in here. And look, it's done our auto curbs for our paths. And so uh, super cool, but that's how you're gonna get your conversion done. And then once your conversion is done, um, you're gonna click this batch export FBX. And um, right now I'm in edit mode just because I was looking at things and you have to be in object mode for it to work. So that's why I got an error there. And then click batch export FBX. And then I can bring up that previous uh, folder. Let me go ahead and pause here, bring that up. Uh, so now we've got that FBX folder and you'll see that's um, you know automatically put all these things in here. And then I'm just gonna show you how we're gonna go back to Unity. Now it's great to have a second monitor because I slide that over there. And then when you come back into Unity, there'll be different protocols on how to do this, but just to get you going quickly here, I'm gonna show you this. You could make a meshes folder and you can make each hole specific. Um, honestly, you're just probably gonna wanna bring the whole lot in. And so I'm just gonna left click and drag this FBX folder. You'll see I've got a bunch of other things that are just trials here and practice stuff. But if I left click and drag that FBX folder in here, it's gonna bring everything in here for you. Then you're gonna click, double click on that and you see you've got all your meshes. You're going to um, select, multi-select everything there and you're gonna to wanna to make sure, so if you've got your inspector panel open, um, then you're gonna generate colliders at the same time on import. And then I'm gonna to go to these other tabs. I don't need animation so I'm unticking that. In materials, um, we're gonna have an auto routine for these. So you don't really need it to import materials either. And then you can just click apply here. And then um, I've already got these meshes in here, uh, but what you're gonna then do is then you can just left, well, yeah, that's probably the easiest way to do it. What I would do is um, create an empty here. So click, click up here, click create empty. And then that's going to make something I'm going to call this meshes or splines or whatever you want to do. And then on that, it's going to put it in a weird place in space potentially. And so you're going to want to reset it. And then that's going to zero it out and that's going to have ones for the scales. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hide all these other ones. Just so I can show you. And... Um, So I'm gonna just left click these all and then I'm gonna drag them into my meshes folder. And then you're gonna see, so your course is uh, showed up, shown up here. And now it doesn't have any of the materials. There'll be a different uh, thing on how to run the um, material conversion tool, but that also is a nice tool and it's gonna look a little different than this on your end. But then you're just gonna literally drag all your materials in here, replace them all and it's gonna auto populate for the course. There actually will be some defaults as well that'll be auto-populated that you could then actually just change out the defaults. So anyway, cool. So I've just hidden the terrain here, but I just want to show you, you know, what the course could look like there. That once you've applied all the materials here, you know, I just to show you there's our nice curbs, and then you're gonna have different materials, and you'll be able to tweak all these uh, to your heart's content. But uh, just wanted to show you. Well, this is what it's going to look like on your end when you've got the auto materials um, showing up. So, all right, happy building.